All right, so the purpose of this video today is going to be explaining the insides of a clutch type LSD, uh, specifically the ones that come out of late 80s, early 90s, E30, E36 type differentials. Um, and so I'm going to be going over terminology, how it works, how it affects you, and just kind of general knowledge. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. Okay, for starters, this is an LS, or this is an open differential from a 1990 325 um, E30, and to give some basic terminology, there is the ring gear here, and all the way in the back, there's kind of like a conical shaped worm gear um, that is directly connected to the drive shaft. So for all intents and purposes, the uh, drive shaft only spins the ring gear. It's the only thing it contacts, and then it directly. Um, transfers torque to the rear wheels. And you'll notice that when I spin this, both of these axle stubs are spinning the exact same direction uh, as expected. <clears throat> the only time it's different is when there's a uh, torque difference between the two rear wheels where if I spin if I spin one side, the other axle stub will actually spin the opposite direction. And that's the only time you'll see these um, spider gears in the middle move. So under regular operation, absolutely no action here in the center in the spider gears. But if we introduce some kind of torque to it and uh, fight the two rear wheels, one wheel will actually stay stationary while the other one receives all the torque. Right now, since they're spinning opposite directions, what's happening is they're actually splitting it evenly 50% to each wheel going one direction, 50% going the opposite direction. So if I was actually strong enough to hold this in place, you'll actually see how oh, it actually works, that <clears throat> the ring gear is still moving and this one side of the diff here is, I'm holding this side still and the other side actually spins freely. So that way under different cornering instances, the outside wheel will receive all of the torque. I believe outside wheel. Uh, so <clears throat> the reason why I'm showing this first is that this spider gear setup is the exact same inside of an LSD. Uh, it's, it's just a smaller, more compact version, and it's got clutches on either side. Otherwise, it's the insides are exactly the same, ring gear is the same, worm gear is the same, the way the drive shaft connects with everything, all that's exactly the same. Okay. All right, so to give kind of a supplement of what I had before, I'm gonna show how the inside of the, uh, the open differential work from it's kind of an outward perspective or something a little bit better lit. Uh, so this right now I'm only spinning the input shaft from the drive shaft. So in regular straight conditions this is all you will see. Alright, now I'm going to hold one axle so that it doesn't move simulating a slip situation. And you can see how those those worm gears just kind of, or not the worm gear, the spider gears actuate and it's spinning the other axle while I'm keeping this other one stationary which it's this side so you can see. So what's actually happening is if I if I spin one or if I hold the ring gear still and I turn one side you'll actually see how the spider gears in the middle transfer from one side to another and this as I explained earlier will make both sides spin the opposite and this is why to test an open differential all you have to do is spin one axle and the other side will uh, spin the opposite direction. Let's see if I can... I don't know if you can see the worm gear in the back. It's a little thing all the way back. Ah, way back there. And also if you're wondering, this thing right here is a speed sensor. It's a little sensor that sits between it and as it goes through it judges how fast your car is going. Okay, that's enough of that. All right, so now that we have uh, that out of the way, this is the LSD unit from inside of a similar uh, car and differential, it's just this one is an LSD unit. Um, <clears throat> you can see it looks pretty much the same. The only difference is when you crack it open, it, everything inside of this is pretty, let me get better lighting there. Everything inside of here is pretty um, not see-throughable. You can't really see the spider gears from inside of it. Um, so just by popping off the cover of your differential, uh, you can see whether or not it's an LSD or not. The other trick is to spin one axle if the other 
side spins the exact same direction, and it's an LSD. <clears throat> All right, so to get the axle out, you're just gonna have to pry it out. That's kind of what I've been doing here. Come on. There you go. Use the axle pries out. This you won't have to do this when you're removing your differential. So <clears throat> this is the axle stub, etc., etc. I'll set that over here for now. Um, this is your spacer ring. It helps uh, set lash. Um, and this looks, this should look exactly like the open differential, except for we don't have this open cavity. So, um, I've popped off the top here. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit later. So, when you open up a differential at first, it's kind of daunting and scary, but as long as you remember which order things came in and you put them back in the correct order, it really shouldn't make that big of a difference. <clears throat> so, to start off, this is a dog ear plate. This is the friction surface your clutch rubs against when it's resisting movement. Um, and they have these little ears because inside the differential you have these locking pieces where as the axle stub will rotate the dog ear plate sits stationary and won't turn. So the clutch will turn, the dog ear plate does not. Take that piece out. Uh, this is in the incorrect order instead of messing around with this stuff. Um, this is what's called the cup spring. Um, you can sort of see it's got kind of a, a concave um, shape to it. And the way this works is as the clutch presses against it, this will actually resist it and give you more friction um, or press against the clutches so that your clutches will get more friction against the dog ear plates. So without this, your LST will just kind of spin on the inside and become an open diff. So very important thing. <coughs> And once again, I don't have everything inside of the stack. Wonderful. All right, so all right, this is completely out of order. So the way the stack normally goes in, here's some spacer washers for the axle. Then it goes cup spring. And then you should probably have a dog ear plate. And then you'll have a clutch here. Um, I don't have any of that because I'm more on and through them out. Anyway, so. <clears throat> Um, I forget the term for this, thrust washer, um, it's also another friction surface for the clutch you can't really replace. Um, but this also has the notches here, so uh, once again this does not rotate, this sits stationary inside the differential so the clutch can rotate against it. The other pieces here, this is one side of the spider gears, like the ones you saw inside the open differential, and it goes through like this and sits on top like that. <clears throat> So what I'll do is I'll disassemble the center of the stack for you. Put these in the correct order. So all of these pieces right now are part of the um, spider gears. Come on. All right. So this is where the fun begins. This right here is our center stack, and uh, if I take this piece off and I rotate the bottom, you'll see how the top rotates the opposite. Um, the top rotates the opposite direction as the bottom, and these have little spines inside them. So your axle, your axle stub actually slides through this and into. So this um, into the spider gears. So this is the end of the stack on one axle side. So you can see how this is verbatim exactly the same as an open diff in the middle. So just get that out. Okay, so I went looking around and apparently I'm a horrible person. I have thrown up all of my LSD clutches. Um, so I'm just gonna, you'll, you'll probably see pictures of them all over the place. But it looks exactly like a dog ear plate minus the tabs and it actually has splines on the inside where it matches up with um, the axle itself. So the axle will spin the clutch while the dog ear plates don't spin since they stay stationary. Um, <clears throat> so next concept we're gonna explain is ramp angles. And so what you'll be able to see from here is, under some better light, is this is the factory BMW ramp angles. It's a two-way LSD because it locks up under acceleration as well as deceleration. 
So as you put more torque into this system, it will actually push this bar against this uh, ramp angle here. And I'm going to guess this is probably a 45 degree angle, probably less than that I'd say. I don't know. Someone can probably do the math on that. Um, <clears throat> so BMW has actually made a factory two-way LSD where it locks the exact same amount under acceleration as it does deceleration. So what happens is as the torque gets applied and this wants to push out this direction, for instance under acceleration, it will actually push these two stacks away from each other and thus pressing the clutches and everything against the outside of the housing, making the two wheels lock up and the center action uh, lessen or stop completely. So, um, <clears throat> let me get my thoughts together. So, 100% stock, the car will, in a straight line or light turning situations, uh, the clutches actually have enough friction that this whole center section is not moving. Keep in mind, this only the center section of the LSD will only move when it's in a slip situation. Otherwise. It just goes by the ring gear and both axles are turned together. Um, <clears throat> after a specific amount of torque, the clutches will begin to slip and the center section will begin to um, lock. Uh, fuck. All right, so all of that's basically simple, easy stuff. Um, then everybody wants to know how to increase lockup. You can make your car lock up more aggressively by machining these at steeper angles. That means when it does lock, it will lock more. Um, and it takes less to push against this for this entire stack to press maximum away from each other and get 100% lock. Um, from what I hear, this is not machinable. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I'm pretty sure someone else can explain it. it. It looks like you could take it to a machine shop and have it machined more to me, but. I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> Another way of increasing lockup is as uh, these surfaces are used, I don't know if you can tell from um, looking at it, but this dog ear plate is actually very, very worn and it's pretty slick and smooth at this point. So the smoother that it is, the less um, it'll want to slip. It's kind of like glazing your flywheel on your stock clutch. It's not going to want to grab as much. So um, whenever you replace clutches, most manufacturers suggest at least flipping it to the other side because this side has never been used as a friction surface because BMW LSDs only have two clutches in them. Um, the other one is if you um, get thicker dog ear plates it will actually increase the static amount of pressure up against your cup spring and everything will be slightly more prone to locking from the very beginning. So the thicker of your dog ear plates the more preload and more breakaway torque you're adding to your LSD. Um, also, Beamer World for E30 LSDs and E36 LSDs make uh, race use clutches which will grab harder. The other way to do it is on um, the BMW um, differentials and many other ones is to simply add more clutches. If you have more clutches, it's more friction and it'll lock up better. Uh, otherwise, I mean, this is all, it looks like black magic, but the majority of this stuff is pretty simple. Um, if you manage to remember how everything went together, it should be pretty easy for people to just rip this apart, put everything back together, and refresh your own LSD. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully this explains it better. Uh, I have a tutorial online that um, hopefully this will either explain all of it or uh, together you'll, you'll get a better understanding of how a differential works. Thanks.